name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and we're going to start a mini series of whatever because this question of questions based on this come up an awful lot from other people and Facebook and emails and stuff like that. What we're talking about is combustion and the, those are going to moan, skip to five minutes, whatever, because he's going on, shit happens. <laughs> so combustion, these are internal combustion engines. Um, and I think I've done this in a previous video, but I think it kind of got lost or people didn't really take note of it. So we're just going to focus on combustion in the first place. So we have, uh, and we're going to go right back to primary school stuff. If you can't remember this, well, here we go. Or maybe you've never, ever fucking heard of it. We have something called the fire triangle. And I've done this before, I know, if you've already seen it. But basically the fire triangle, if you want fire, <laughs> you have to have air, or more precisely, it's oxygen. Right, you have to have oxygen because uh, combustion, or basically fire, is an exothermic oxidising reaction. We then, we, we then need fuel, and then we need heat. So why do we need these things? Well, so basically what happens is, is in our fuel, there is um, energy that can be liberated. This is chemical en energy, basically it's potential energy, but we call it chemical energy. Um, because potential energy, you can have potential energy in something rotating and obviously chemical energy, the fuel just sits there. So that's the difference between potential and connect, connect, uh, potential and chemical energy. Is chemical energy is stored within the actual structure of the uh, molecule or whatever you have in the first place. Uh, where does this energy come from? Plants have spent forever uh, absorbing energy from the sun. They've then packed it in and cre basically it's creating something. They are basically... Um, <coughs> trying to create order, it's all to do with entropy and stuff, but they create molecules. They then die, fall into the ground, it gets squished and all the rest of it, and all of a sudden you get the fuel that we use, which is petroleum-based products. These can be synthetically made, it's just very, um, well, basically you have to pump a lot more energy in than you end up getting out. Um, with plants and stuff that were around uh, millions and millions of years ago, they've already done that bit for us while we were, well, we were even here. So it's easy just to tap into that, filter it out, you know, do a fractional distillation, get the fuel you want, and then just basically oxidize that. So the energy is, it's not in the bonds, it's the energy that the molecules have. Um, in a sense, the energy, the work that was put in to create that structure, that's the way it is. If you snap a bond, a bond physically isn't something. You'll see these things at school where you'll have a ball and a, a plastic rod or something between them. That's nothing. There's actually nothing there. It's actually the interactions, um, electron sharing, stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Covalent bonds, ionic bonds, metallic bonds, blah, 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 blah. So the fuel, there's energy in your fuel. And um, what we need to do is we need to get that out. Which unfortunately means we need, we need to put more energy in. If you do work, if you do anything, you have to put energy in. You have to transfer energy from one state to another. So what we do is, is we need something that will react. We need a reactant, which is our oxygen. Um, so basically, if you just put energy into a fuel, it will just expand, oscillate and expand, thermally expand, and it'll go back to the way it was. We need to change the state of it, which is basically why you stick oxygen in there. Oxygen, like I said, she's a slag. She loves to party with anybody. And... Um, we have a, a, a combustion, an exothermic reaction, which is the oxygen um, basically filling in the gaps or plugging in there um, to create something else. So when you look at uh, rust, for example, you've got steel, it's sat there happy as steel, but oxygen, she loves to party with anyone, so she gets in there and makes a lower state, a lower energy state. This is what it's, yeah, it, I don't want to go too much into it because we're doing primary school stuff, but... Um, Readily, there's oxygen in the air, so there's 21%, 20% oxygen in the air around us. The rest is basically nitrogen and tiny trace bits of whatever, like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, argon, hydrogen, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> and water, obviously. Um, so basically what we need to do is, is we need to, this oxygen needs to react with this fuel. Now, you can have just petrol laid on the floor and there's oxygen in the air, there is no combustion. That's because, in a sense, the fuel molecule, the molecule that is the fuel, is happy just to sit there. It's stable-ish. 
it's pretty much stable and it'll sit there and it doesn't want to change state without we're making something happen so we need to basically put work in so for our oxygen to get in here and react with these things we need to put energy in and this energy is in the form of heat energy heat heat energy is basically the same thing so this comes back to our compression now our compression in a sense it, it serves to oh i've got a board rubber what the fuck am i doing look at that check it out thank you paul um so basically what's happening is is that um we need to bring up the temperature um, of this mixture of fuel and oxygen forget the nitrogen we don't really care about that um, we need to raise the temperature so that there is enough energy in there for work to be done and we use compression so basically we have a cylinder like so our piston starts down here like this and then this is a closed container so this is our cylinder head and as our piston goes up it's here first and then it moves up to here like so this all seems like really basic stuff but let's just say at our first position when our fuel and air goes in let's just say the ambient temperature is 20 degrees celsius and let's just say our piston and everything else is also ambient and all this we're just starting up when our fuel and air mixture goes in there it is exactly the same as it is in your tank there is fuel some of it is vaporized and there is air in your tank nothing happens so basically what we do is we compress this mixture the piston goes up makes this volume here our sweat volume a lot tighter like this when we do this this raises the temperature um, we'll do a video of what exactly because people say it's the friction between the molecules it's not the friction between the molecules for fuck's sake uh, we'll go into a bit more detail in that in a when we do compression <coughs> and when we compress a gas the same amount of gas and we force it into a smaller volume the temperature rises and so does the pressure because temperature and pressure are proportional and they are both inversely proportional to um, volume so when you decrease the volume decrease the volume the temperature and pressure go up so basically what we do is um, this helps us in two ways we don't have a piston that just goes up and then stops or a piston that just goes down and stops we need a cycle so we need a reciprocation our piston to go up and down up and down and through the con rod and all the angles and geometry of it we can turn that reciprocating motion into rotational motion which rotational motion is torque force around the center so when we do this um what happens is is that our auto ignition temperature and i can't remember what it is is it 230 degrees celsius for petrol gasoline bang just like that <laughs> just throws a rod um our petrol gasoline is 230 degrees celsius so in a sense we don't want to go up to that temperature so this auto ignition temperature is if you have your fuel and oxidizer and heat input it will just ignite this is how we create combustion of flame from our fire triangle we've got all three so what we do is when we do compression we um we want to stay away from this temperature so this is why it's quite important if you just keep on going higher and higher and higher and higher compression you'll get what we call pre-ignition and or detonation um, i'll do separate videos on the difference between both because there is a massive difference between each one um, but pre-ignition basically means we have a ignition timing so we pick a time when we want to ignite our fuel air mixture and pre-ignition is it ignites before that it auto ignites before that before that point um, and no diesels are not pre-ignition engines and not they're not really detonation engines either we'll, we'll talk about diesels at a later date because like i said i always say that um so basically what happens is is that we uh, need to stay away from this auto ignition temperature and if it's wrong i'll stick the number on the screen um but we need to stay away from that but we'd like to get very very close to that um why well because we have to come back up 
we can compress our mixture means our energy density is in a smaller uh, a smaller volume which means our flame front propagation will be quicker which is what we want especially when we're going high rpm this is one of the reasons why you have to have retard and advance your ignition we'll talk about that as well um and the spark plug and this is what spark plugs are for they basically so just say this is our auto ignition temperature just say we've gone from 20 degrees we've compressed it 10 to 1 and then the temperature in here has gone up to, to 200 degrees celsius so this is just below our auto ignition temperature and that's what we have a spark plug for a spark plug is basically an arc which is a plasma arc it's ionized it's ionized gases it's actually ionized mixture that's in your cylinder and that um the current that travels across that arc basically is very very fucking hot we're talking thousands and thousands of degrees uh, i think it's six to eight thousand degrees something like that and basically what that does is around the spark plug and we call it a kernel it's basically a fireball and that has now gone well above this uh this 230 so we get an ignition event and then as that ignition event expands outwards and the reason why it expands outwards is because it's kind of like an onion the center of it where your kernel is let's just say that's 400 degrees c something like that and then this outer the the gas um the ch fresh charge the fuel air mixture around that kernel around this fireball um, then heats up well it's already 200 degrees so we don't need it to go that hot so ju let's just say it goes up to 300 like this which means that heats up the next bit and the next bit and the next bit and the next bit. Now this is a perfect, you know, this is perfect circles, but these are circles. Um, combustion, obviously with pent roofs and wedge type bathtubs, all the different kind of combustion chamber shapes. This is not just about pistons and not just about valves. It's all about flame propagation as well. It's a very complicated thing. And there are pros and cons to each design like Hemi's uh, wedge types, um, Harren, um, wedge types, uh, pent roofs and all the rest of it. So your flame propagation is also very important and when they're doing research on extreme lean burning engines and trying to make diesels more efficient stuff like that, this is actually a lot of their focus is what happens in the combustion chamber uh, and especially for emissions. Uh, does our uh, combustion chamber shape allow for all the fuel mixture to be combusted because um, hydrocarbon emissions basically you're spitting out unburnt fuel as some of the worst some of the nastiest um, but you can see basically this compression it helps us out it doesn't just help us out with thermal efficiency it doesn't just help us out with flame from uh, flame propagation and speed it also helps us um, basically get to this ignition temperature and someone did ask a question they said about the RG500 with the waste spark system. And he said, if it wastes sparks, how come it just doesn't ignite all the time? Well, we've just basically covered the answer. If you have a cylinder like this, let's just say it's a two stroke one with ports in it or what have you, and a two stroke one here. If your piston is down here like so, and then your piston is up here, and both, oh, what the fuck have I done? Jesus Christ like so if you have uh, an ignition event every 180 degrees which is like the rg does if you have an ignition event here where there's a spark and you have a spark here if you spark when the pistons at bottom dead center or tdc or five or ten degrees before or anything like that uh, depending where your ignition your um, ignition advances or whatever <coughs> if you spark here Yes, there's fuel and air mixture, there's exhaust gases going out, there's fuel and air mixture replacing it, stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that the temperature um, just, it just isn't there. Um, yes, this spark might go to a thousand degrees or something like that uh, when it actually fires and sparks. The problem is, is that the fuel air mixture around it, it might ignite a tiny bit, but then all of the rest of this gas in here, let's just say it's 20 degrees C you can't raise the temperature from this little tiny kernel for the whole combustion chamber so you kind of get little pops sometimes uh, you'd have to use you know very specialized uh, viewing equipment to basically see stuff like this but that air fuel mixture going in there is cool it's evaporating it's evaporating off the walls stuff like that it's uh, the, the, the basically the 
part of our fire triangle is we've got the fuel, we've got the air, but the heat is lacking. This heat is lacking here, so no combustion. When we're here and we've done our compression, and our compression just say we're at 200 degrees C, when we fire this, we have the air, we have the fuel, and we have the heat. So booyah, we get combustion. So that's why when these waste spark systems fire at bottom dead center, nothing bloody happens. Um, with four strokes, it's different because when you fire at bottom, uh, when you, if you had a similar system um, that fired all plugs in a similar arrangement, you'd be on the bottom of your um, power stroke and you'd be bound, oh no, you'd be at the top dead center. No, bottom dead center, if you had the same arrangement, you'd fire when you're at the bottom of your power stroke, ready on your exhaust stroke. You'd also fire when you're on the bottom, at bottom dead center on your ignition, um, induction stroke, your intake stroke. So like I say, the volume's too great, the temperatures of the gas inside there just aren't there. They're just not high enough. You know, even if this was like fucking 80 degrees C because it's been absorbing heat from the cylinder walls and the piston and all the rest of it, it's still nowhere near. Um, the mixture around the spark plug isn't dense enough, the density of the gas isn't enough, and so you might get one or two, uh, a couple of million uh, molecules igniting possibly, but nothing enough to cause this kind of chain reaction, this flame, flame propagation, because we haven't got the compression there. Um, because that's another thing compression does is, and same thing with squish bands, is you're squishing, you're basically trying to make sure your fuel and air density around that spark plug is really basically quite high, not just pressure, but the densi density and pressure. You can have pressure without density and so on, just temperature. <sighs> this will become a lot more clear when I show you some other things as well, when we just talk about combustion flame fronts and all the rest of it. But yeah, the whole point of combustion, or trying to get combustion to happen, is your fuel, air, and um, the heat source. If your spark plugs don't work, you don't get no bang. If you've got an air leak and there's too much air going in and it leans out, you feel there's not enough fuel, then you don't get a bang or you get a re very rough shit one. If you don't have any fuel, your carb or your injectors aren't firing or something shit like that, then it's just air and heat and nothing happens. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.